It was a nice sunny day in, back in 1984 in Bonn, Germany, where I had established my first piano workshop, where I was rebuilding and tuning pianos. Something seemingly ordinary happened that day. Uh, I didn't think anything bad, but a client wasn't home whose piano I was supposed to tune. So I decided to have a coffee. And nearby was a hotel, which was owned by a friend of mine, and I thought if I didn't see the client, I could at least see my friend. But the friend wasn't in either, and so I decided at least I should have my coffee. I ordered a coffee and went outside of the hotel to sit in the sunshine. And there was only one gentleman sitting at the table, and uh, I thought it's stupid and weird to sit at another vacant table, so I asked him if I may join in. He invited me kindly, and soon <coughs> we developed a very interesting discussion. It turned out he was an industry consultant, among others. And back then, I just had developed the idea to design and set up a production of the most affordable quality piano in Germany, because German pianos were very expensive, and hardly anybody could afford them, in particular not families with children. And uh, he was very interested to he hear what I'm doing, and I said, I'm piano builder and have this plan to set up this very uh, efficient production technology by inventing the most efficient uh, ways and methods to produce pianos. <clears throat> and he asked me what the difference are between pianos and uh, what's the deal, so to say, why are pianos different at all? So f one of his questions, for example, was, uh, couldn't you make a piano out of yogurt even or so? I said, no, no, no. <laughs> it has steel, wood and everything that's uh, solid materials. And then after I had explained him my actual plan to set up this production of affordable pianos, he said that will most likely be a failure. I was rather shocked about this answer and asked him why. He said, very easy, if you really come up with the most efficient production technologies, sooner or later somebody will come, a big company will come and steal your invention. And you as an individual cannot probably, uh, possibly do something against a multi-million dollar corporation. And then he planted a seed in my mind which instantly began to grow and kept growing until this very day. He said, if you want to succeed, then you need to think about creating something very best. So if you're capable of, and if you can design and create the best sounding piano on the planet, may it even be the most expensive one too, then you will succeed and nobody can take that away from you. Sounded very logical to me. I saw this man never again, but instantly dropped the plan to build cheap pianos. From that day on, I was focusing only on one subject, how it is possible, how could it be possible, to create the world's best sounding piano. And the sound of pianos, as we know them, we have actually one grand piano and an upright piano in various uh, colors, in various sizes. And I was very fascinated from, by piano from my childhood on. My mother was playing piano, and I found piano is the most beautiful, <coughs> most beautiful instrument on the planet. So I learned piano building, and after I had uh, and finished my education and had this piano store and was working intensively on pianos, then I had found out that pianos were actually limited by design. All pianos needed to look like you see this on the, on the picture. Whether you have a grand piano or an upright, only the colors and the sizes were different, but essentially the sound was pretty much the same at all of these pianos. Only differing based on production quality, like the famous ones, for example, were investing very much effort to produce them at the highest quality or material quality but essentially the same. And more than 100 years ago, basically, the piano industry had defined the principles by which pianos had to be built. 
So after I had looked into or worked for years, it was already like 10 years into my career as a piano technician and tuner, I found uh, this is uh, the, the wrong approach. Actually, the industry had approached this entire subject by creating the principles of piano building based on the fact that the piano should be a portable object. So you should be able to put, uh, carry it from one place to the other to provide pianos to concert halls or to private houses. And I was looking at the church organ, for example, and thinking, no, why is this uh, church organ? Nobody c complains that the church organ is built into a church. And essentially, uh, that's the way to go. And uh, so after I had thought very intensively about what the gentleman in the cafe told me, I decided I will go for the Formula One in piano building. And that was, of course, a very bold decision. And uh, uh, nobody could tell would it work out fine or what would happen. And uh, I, as a basically a very daring person, so I thought, what could possibly go wrong? The piano may not sound as I expected, so, but I have to try it at least. And so I had decided that I go for uh, the Formula One, which means a piano that would be vertical for, because of the sound beaming right in the public and not against the ceiling and the floor. And uh, I began to ponder and plan this piano to build it in my workshop in Bonn. And after some considerations where to go, which, way, which sound design I would like to have, I was deciding that I definitely want to have a more powerful sound, and typically you have this at pianos. And uh, it would have no cross-stringing, cross-stringing of pianos was, for example, one principle that the piano building industry had defined 100 years ago and said, this is the way you have to build pianos. And I said, I will return to the principle of the 18th century, put the strings all vertical for having a smoother transition between the middle part and the bass. First of all, and have a better balance from the bass register to the treble, where we have a hertz wise from 27.5 to 4,186 hertz. So in 1985, one year later, after I met the gentleman, I began to build this piano. And uh, essentially, it, I had to, of course, to solve a lot of problems that were not experienced before because nobody had attempted ever to build such piano. But I was going on and keeping on, uh, despite the fact that most people, when they saw me working on this crazy invention, put up a pitiful smile, like, yeah, yeah, okay, do your piano, who knows, maybe it works out. Uh, but I kept going. And in 1987, November 1987, the piano was presented to the public by <coughs> Paris-based uh, pianist Tupian Katsaris. And this is what it looked like. And uh, the concert, Tupian Katsaris played a concert at our workshop, and uh, the public was excited, and it seemed that... Uh, looked like that my <coughs> attempt to build the Formula One, I was on the right track, so to say, that it's possible to build a Formula One piano. Although this was a prototype, so it was not the end of the road. And little did I know that it would take 30 years more until I would be able to present a, a, a variety of different sounding pianos to the public, including this one. This is called Una Corda because it has only one string per note, and this particular piano was the very first one that I built. That's the prototype of Unacorda pianos, which in the meantime have experienced quite a large acknowledgement, and right now we are building the 30th about of these pianos. And this piano, I will demonstrate a little bit of the sound. I don't know how the microphone will uh, convey it, but it sounds definitely different than anything you know.
So it has a, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And piano, the first one was commissioned by the German composer and pianist Nils Fram. And some of you may know him. And uh, I became friends with him while we were building this piano because we were had a conversation about design principles, about sound, this and that. And uh, when this piano was presented to the public, uh, then Nils actually presented it in, 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 in Berlin to an auditory of like four or 500 people. Everybody loved it and Nils was very happy and he asked me what I do, what I want to do as the next one. And I said, definitely the next big one. The 450i, it's called because 450 centimeters high. Nils commissioned also this one and off we went with this endeavor. And now I need some assistance. Security first, thank you very much. And now I will demonstrate <coughs> to you how high you have to get to play the 450 piano, for example. Still have to get higher. This is about the height of the platform where the pianist stands on or sits while playing, of course in order to play the piano, because for technical reasons, the action and keyboard has to be on top of, at the top of the piano. And we may better continue from below. <laughs> I'm not afraid of height. So, thank you very much. And uh, after we had delivered this one to Niels, then the Latvian city of Ventspils uh, invited me to build one for the new concert hall in Ventspils, which I, of course, happily did. Also, then, this is it, how it looks. Yes. After this was installed, shortly later, a private client from the States ordered one <coughs> for their family home in Florida, which is, of course, very nice. <laughs> and... <coughs> The essence of my story is, uh, of course, you would be wondering what you, you could take away from this. I would say essentially three, three aspects, three lessons. The one is question everything, even if it's established 100 years and uh, nobody thinks there's anything wrong about it, you could question it and maybe you could find a way to innovate. And you should keep, to your, keep sticking to your decision, innovate no matter what, go forward. The lesson number two would be, if you find out your invention is like 30 years too early, don't get discouraged. Be patient. The time may come. And finally, the lesson number three, which is maybe the most important. If you ever walk into a restaurant or a hotel and a cafe and there's only one person sitting at a table and all other tables are vacant, you should walk up to that person and ask if you may join in may change your life. Thank you very much.